I work with a social environmental organization in Brazil that is called Terra de Direitos, meaning Land of Rights, and we work with the social movements in Brazil, especially this, uh, the peasant movements that are part of Via Campesina in Brazil, including the MST, the Landless People Movement, uh, against you know the impacts of agribusiness expansion in the con in, in the country. We we work for the land reform and for food sovereignty, which is the right of each people to produce in its territory food to feed themselves before meeting export agendas as export demands. Brazil is, uh, you can say, is the biofuel republic of Brazil, no? because we have been a leading act actor. This is uh, pretty much rooted in an experience of 30 years using ethanol in our cars. Uh, this experience started back in 75 right after the 73 peak oil that we have, the crisis of the oil prices. And what we had during all those years, of course the program was not continuous, we had the peak and then we had a decline and then it got back again in 2003, uh, is massive uh, expansion of monocultures. We, have, uh, we are the largest exporter of many very important uh, 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 agro-commodities, agro you know, as soy, as cotton, as oranges, but also as cane. And now, besides the sugar uh, made of sugar cane, we're also exporting 70% of what is out there in terms of ethanol that is sold. And as in terms of impacts, we have a very strong and I think quite well noticed in the in the international media uh, occurrence of uh, slave labor or debt peonage, where an, uh, an army of around 500,000 sugar cane cutters they have to harvest by hand the cane after the cane is burned because the cane is burned and then you are able to get into the plantation to harvest by hand. And this has led to a lot of injuries, uh, a whole uh, network of people that exploit and profit out of migrant workers, very young migrant workers with no security. We also had, in terms of environmental impact, we have a major loss of biodiversity. We have the deforestation rates growing exponentially. We have a phenomen phenomenon that is quite recent, is that uh, foreign capital and foreign money coming directly to rent land for sugarcane production. Those are contracts for 20 years, renewable for more 20 years. I mean, this makes unviable any other project of development or any other alternative agriculture that you want to put in place once the contracts are already being signed and a lot of land is being sold for sugarcane. talk about agribusiness in general, be it for food, for fuel or for fiber, without talking about the large corporations. In Brazil we have a very strong push of the corporations, but also we have a very strong, the, the leading actors are national actors. Is the National Development Bank, which lends money with very low interest rates to the ethanol industry, and we have uh, national groups that have been dealing with sugarcane for pretty much 500 years, no? because this is a colonial invention and a colonial experiment that goes on. Uh, Kozan is the most well known of them and it uh, last month it bought all the Exxon, Exxon uh, distribution stations in the country so it has become the first vertical corporation of renewable fuels, as they call themselves, able to buy land, grow cane, process ethanol and distribute direct to the consumers. Resistance to agrofuels expansion it has been has grown a lot in Brazil as we have a constituency uh, pretty much led by the social pe the peasant movement against agribusiness again agro export economy uh, and since last year when Bush uh, President Bush and President Lula set an ethanol alliance to foster the market and to open open way you know for this new industry social movements have gone to the street have protested and we have. Uh, trying hard, you know, to deconstruct the official propaganda to show the side of the work, workers' rights violations, human rights violations, environmental degradation, and so there is a very strong push by the grassroots sector. But we have a bottleneck on this: is that the middle class is very comfortable with their ethanol-run cars, you know, their flex fuel, as we call, 
cars and it has a lot of appeal right now because ethanol is less than half percent of the gasoline so but we need to win also the sector of society that is very small but it's privileged it is urban uh, about what is going on in the countryside and uh, what's going on with the water and biodiversity that are common research not only peasant but to every every city the the landless people movement as the other peasant movements in brazil they have uh, a very strong um, uh, assessment of what are the effects what is the main objective, the main goal, and what are the effects of the industrial agriculture, what was the Green Revolution, and it, it is today a political line within the movement to support agroecology, to support local production of food and fuel, and to uh, recover the area that has been deforested by industrial industry agriculture. This is a very strong push also to defend the legislation to the right to own traditional seeds and to exchange them out of the transnational seed market that has been controlled and pushed with uh, GMOs and etc. agrochemicals. The, the, the peasants' response to climate crisis is to cool down the earth by not by a consumer's logic, no, as preached by Al Gore, but as a production logic. As you know, you have to get rid of petrol dependent and emissions related to fossil fuel. So once you have local schemes of production that are agroecological and do not demand a lot of fuels, and you can commercialize those rebuilding local economies, you are contribu contributing majorly to reduce emissions and to cool down the earth because we are also working with recovering all the areas that have been devastated and deforested by this crazy demand of energy.